Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome back to the show. Today we've got an integral. That's all I'm going to say about it. We have one hell of an integral indeed. It is the integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 divided by x to the n times log of 1 divided by x to the n times log of 1 divided by x to the n times log, etc, etc, etc. That's what we have. How in the name of God are we going to solve this? Well, let's make our lives easier and compress the entire integrand into something else that I'm going to call y. So we have the integral i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of y dx. But of course this means that we're going to have to define y recursively. Because you'll notice here first up that this thing over here is also the y variable. So that means we have y equal to log of 1 divided by x to the n times y. And this implies that e to the y equals, wait terribly, sorry about that, much better, equals 1 by x to the n times y. And this implies that 1 by x to the n equals y times e to the y, which is going to make some people very, very happy. The reason for that happiness is going to be the Lambert W function, which I have invoked a few times, but it's not every day that I get to use it. So what is that function? Just a really quick recap. If we define a function f of y as e to the y times y, then that means that y equals the inverse function of e to the y times y. Now this inverse function is something called the Lambert W function, which we write as w, of course. So y equals Lambert W y times e to the y. Okay, cool. And in our case, we have y times e to the y equal to 1 by x to the n, which implies that y equals lambda w of 1 by x to the n. So we have a form for y in terms of x, meaning our integral is, in fact, a very cute integral now. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of what exactly? We have i equal to integral 0 to infinity, replacing y by lambda w of 1 by x to the n dx which is a pretty nice way to restate the integration problem. And of course, this relation is going to come in handy later when we figure out the limits of integration. But for now, I'd actually like to return to the fact that because this equation holds, we have e to the y times y equal to 1 by x to the n. So that means we can transform from the x realm of the integral to the y realm of the integral. So the first thing we need is the differential element. So we have x to the n equal to 1 by, wait, let's write this as e to the negative y divided by y, which implies on differentiation that n times x to the n minus 1 dx equals, what do we have here? We have negative e to the negative y divided by y minus e to the negative y divided by y squared dy. Okay, cool. So that means all I have to do is now determine what exactly would be x to the 1 minus n because we have dx equal to negative 1 by n times x to the 1 minus n times e to the negative y divided by y, or I'm just going to factor that out as well. So we have e to the negative y times 1 by y plus 1 by y squared dy. And x to the 1 minus n is pretty easy to determine because we have x to the n equal to 1 by e to the y times y. So that implies that x to the 1 minus n equals, well, we need the exponent to be 1 by n. So that means we have e to the negative y times 1 minus n divided by n, correct? Yeah, that's about it, divided by... 1 minus n divided by n. Okay, cool. Terribly sorry about that. That's a rare instance where I say, okay, cool, and terribly sorry about that at the same time. So watch out for a very good friend of mine in the comment section making timestamps for all of, you know, these two catchphrases of mine. Anyway, so that's what x to the 1 minus n looks like. And now to plug it into our equation for dx in terms of dy, we have dx equal to negative e to the negative y 
times uh, divided by n times e to the negative y times 1 minus n by n. And of course, we have the y variables as well. So we have y to the 1 minus n by n. We have 1 by y plus 1 by y squared dy. Now for the simplifications for the exponential functions, we'll have negative e to the negative y factored out. We're left with a 1 plus 1 minus n by n. So that's n plus 1 minus n by n. So you're left with 1 by n. So we have e to the negative y by n divided by n. And now we also have 1 by y to the... Uh, it's 1 plus 1 minus n by n. So again, we have cancellation of the n's and we're left with 1 by n, which is cool. Then we have y squared down here. So that's 2 plus 1 minus n by n. In other words, we have 2n plus 1 minus n by n. So that means we have 1 plus n by n. Okay, cool. So that's our new differential element, and now it's time to piece everything back together. We also need to transform the limits of integration, and that's pretty easy given the nature of the w function. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For the lower limit, that is x tending to 0 from the right, we have 1 by x to the n, that is the argument of the w function in our equation here, approaching positive infinity. Now the w function is the inverse function of an increasing function, meaning that it's an increasing function as well. And it's pretty easy to see that it'll approach infinity in this case. And it's even easier to see using this equation here, this very simple equation that w of t times e to the t, we know that this will spit out the t variable. So in the limit as t goes to infinity, we see that both the argument and the output of the w function approach infinity. So in our case, we have y approaching positive infinity for the lower limit. Now, what about the case of the upper limit for now, that is x tending to infinity? By that token, we have 1 by x to the n approaching 0. And again, it's pretty easy to see using this very equation as well, that lambert w of w, uh, lambert w of 0 is 0. So we have y approaching 0. Okay, cool. So all of this implies that the target integral i transforms into something very interesting. We have the integral from infinity to zero of negative one by n because of the differential element. And the w of one by x to the n is, of course, y. And the other fragments of dy are as follows. So we have e to the negative y by n times 1 by y to the 1 by n, terribly sorry about that, and that's much better, plus 1 by y to the 1 plus n divided by n dy. Of course, now we need just a little bit of simplification. First up, we can switch up the limits of integration to get rid of the extra negative signs. So we have 1 by n times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative y by n times, what exactly do we have? We have 1 by uh, y to the negative 1 times y to the 1 by n. So we have y by negative 1 plus 1 by n, which of course could be written as y to the 1 minus 1 by n. And then we have 1 by y to the negative 1 plus 1 plus n by n. So in this case, we have negative n plus 1 plus n by n, some cancellation. So we're left with y to the 1 by n, which of course means that we have y to the negative 1 by n, which is, again, pretty cool. So far, so good. Everything seems to be coming together quite nicely. And let me just write this a bit more clearly. There we go. So we have a couple of integrals now to evaluate. We have 1 by n times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative y by n times y to the 1 minus 1 by n dy plus the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative y by n times y to the negative 1 by n dy. Okay, cool. And now let me call this thing here i sub 1 and the other integral, we'll call this one i sub 2. Now, both these integrals are actually 
pretty easy to evaluate. They all just need a simple substitution. For the integral i sub 1, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative y by n times y to the negative 1 by n dy. And we're just going to let y by n equal u. And this means that we have dy equal to n du. And the limits of integration are clearly not altered, so we still have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u times... Now, y would be n times u, so we have n to the negative 1 by n times u to the negative 1 by n as well. And the differential element is now n times du. So that means outside the integral, we have this constant that is n to the 1 minus 1 by n, which I'm going to write as n divided by n to the 1 by n times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u times u to the negative 1 by n, which can be written as 1 minus 1 by n minus 1 du. And the reason for that is that we now have the integral form for our friend the gamma function. In this case, we have gamma 1 minus 1 by n, which is pretty cool. So that means we have i sub 1 equal to n divided by n to the 1 by n times gamma of 1 minus 1 by n. And of course, we have exactly the same sequence of steps to get i sub 2. And we have gamma of 2 minus 1 by n, which can be expressed in terms of gamma 1 minus 1 by n. By using the recurrence formula for the gamma function, we know that gamma x plus 1 equals x times gamma x. And this thing could be written as 1 plus 1 minus 1 by n. So in that case, we have 1 minus 1 by n times gamma 1 minus 1 by n. Okay, cool. And this implies that the target integral i equaled... Now we had a factor of n being multiplied. No, it was in fact a factor of 1 by n. So that means we have some cancellation of the n's. We could, of course, factor out 1 by n to the 1 by n. And we're left with something of the sorts of gamma 1 minus 1 by n. And this could be factored out too. So we have 1 by n to the 1 by n times gamma 1 minus 1 by n factored out, leaving behind 1 plus n times 1 minus 1 by n. And this, of course, means that the 1s cancel out and we're left with n. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral i equals n to the 1 minus 1 by n times gamma 1 minus 1 by n, which is a really cool result indeed. I think it's, I think it's quite beautiful that such a monstrous nested integral has such a beautiful closed form expressed in terms of the n parameter, again, being a positive integer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. All links in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.